Before you choose to become a cabin crew or a flight attendant for an airline, it would be wise for you to understand which are the benefits that you'd be getting once you start this career. Now on this video, we'll be talking about 10 top benefits of being a flight attendant. So all the cool things that you can do if you are a flight attendant. Towards the end, we'll be talking about duty-free. This is one of the best benefits you get when you're a flight attendant, especially if you know how to do it. And this is what will allow you to reach the same amount, if not even more, of salary that a pilot does on board. Hi, my name is Orlando and you're watching Wishcasting. We do travel and aviation videos. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. So one of the super cool things of being a flight attendant is that you literally have access to every part of the aircraft except for the cargo. One of the cool things is that you have access to the CRC, which is also known as the crew rest compartment. And uh, this is one of the coolest parts of the aircraft where you actually go to sleep when you have a long flight. Like we call them ULRs, ultra long range flights. And in this case, you go there and you sleep for a couple of hours. You also have screens so you can watch a film if you like. You have magazines. Usually people just sleep because they're completely dead. So they pass out. We have a video, consider watching it. You can check it out on this link right here. I'm not sure if it's here or here. Anyways, so this is one of the areas where you can have access to, but you can also have access to the cockpit. Now this is normal. Everybody knows about it, but I gotta say, ever since the 9-11 terror attack, the uh, actual cabin has been distinctively separated from the cockpit, maybe even before that. I remember when I was a kid and I flew with Delta, I was able to go in the cockpit with my dad. Uh, th there was a curtain separating the cockpit from the cabin. But nowadays, in order for you to get in, not only you have to be a cabin crew, and not only you have to be a cabin crew for that airline, but you have to be an operating cabin crew, meaning that you have to be scheduled for that flight. Only in that case, you can go in. For example, if I go on leave and I'm on an Emirates flight, I can't access to the cockpit unless I am operating that flight. So if you are working on a flight in Emirates, you're able to see a 777 Boeing or an A380 cockpit, which is really, really cool. Especially the A380 cockpit, which is huge. It's really big. You can actually stand up. The windows are, they span on a 180 degree angle, which is absurd, even more than 180. Another really cool thing is that you'll learn how to open doors to, for example, toilets or to crew rest compartments, to places where usually the access is restricted, even though the door is actually locked. Even though there's a combination, there's a way you can bypass the code and simply open the door. Now, I'm not gonna be telling you how you can open these doors. I'm sure there's someone out there that did it. There's a way that you'll learn when you become a cabin crew on how to open locked doors just like that. It's really cool. Another really cool thing that you'll get to enjoy is international cuisine. If you depart from Dubai with an Emirates flight, you will have uh, Dubai catering. So you'll probably have first courses and second courses, appetizers, all uh, depending on the Middle Eastern cuisine. However, when you go abroad, let's say we go to Italy and we fly back, the, the food that is catered on the aircraft is not food that comes from Dubai, it's food that is catered from Italy. So you'll have Italian dishes, even the menu will be an Italian menu. It makes sense for you to have an Italian menu because they're accustomed to that type of food and they'd be happy to have it again on board. And uh, so you'll be able to, to try that. Regardless if you're an economy cabin crew or a business class cabin crew or a first class cabin crew, anyone on the aircraft has a right to eat food from any class. So I'll give you an example. You're working in economy. You can eat the food that is an economy if you like, no problem. But if you want, when you're done working, you can go upstairs and ask if there's a spare tray, spare appetizers, spare um, first courses, or even desserts, and have that from the passengers. Or if you like, you can go to first class and have that. It's a little bit trickier in first class because passengers eat on demand whenever they want. They're gonna probably tell you no because some passengers might ask last moment. Another really cool benefit is that you can actually go in the cockpit and you can speak with the pilots. You can talk and hold a conversation with the pilots. And a lot of people might say, oh, so what? Well, a lot of cabin crew don't want to stick being a cabin crew. A lot of cabin crew want to become pilots because it's pretty much very similar, a similar pattern. You have a different type of responsibility. I know it's a way bigger responsibility. If you have a passion in flying an aircraft, why not? There's no one better than these pilots uh, to ask these questions and knowing the shortcuts and using these shortcuts will help you a whole lot 
in choosing the right school, the right academy to become a pilot. There's a lot of dead moments, and one of the best ways to use those dead moments is to go in the cockpit and ask questions, if you're interested, of course. Another super cool benefit that you have if you're a cabin crew is that you get discounts not only in Dubai or within the UAE, but even abroad. Like I remember I went to, I think it was Boston, uh, there was a Ferris wheel. We told them we work for Emirates and we got a 10% discount. I mean, 10% is nothing, you know, but 10% here, 10% there, why not? We even went to Perth and we went into an organic shop and we told them that we were Emirates cabin crew and they gave us a 15% off on chia seeds. I don't know, gyms. If you go to a certain gym, you get a discount if you're an Emirates cabin crew. There's a lot of things that you can get at a discounted rate if you're an Emirates cabin crew. When you go through the airport duty-free, you get discounts there too. For example, in Dusseldorf, there's a, a cabin crew, a staff a duty-free shop only for staff. It's not the actual airport's duty-free, because that's more expensive, but there's a staff duty-free. Discounts up to 40% if I'm not mistaken. A little side note on that, unfortunately, if you're working for Emirates, you return to Dubai, you can't carry any alcohol with you. It's forbidden. If you carry it, you have to pay a tax on it, which defeats the whole purpose of getting a discount. So just keep that in mind. If you're working for another airline, that problem won't be yours. You also get discounts when you go to swimming pools or to venues or to restaurants. You, you get up to a 50% discount if you have a, a specific card um, stating that you're an Emirates employee. This is, this is unbelievable. When I was in Dubai, I was always going out and always paying half price. This is amazing, really. And the restaurants, wow, top-notch ones. Now we're getting to some of the best perks of being a flight attendant. I'm gonna talk about this perk based on my experience with Emirates, flying at a either really, really reduced price or at a 90% discount or even free for certain airlines. And this is fantastic because in this period of, I don't know how many years you'll choose to work for uh, the airline, in this period you'll be able to fly abroad a, a crazy amount of times. Like you, you can go to Bali, I went to Bali twice, I went to Munich, I visited the Neue Schweinstein Castle, the Isle of Wight, and all these places, I have videos of them, I have done several travel guides in those destinations if you want to have a look, just go back, visit Wishcasting and check all my travel guides, but you actually have the ability to travel around the world and span globally because Emirates, the Emirates network is, is huge. You literally can go anywhere in the world for super cheap. And if I'm not mistaken, it's about 50 euros or about $60 for one way ticket to go, for example, to Bali from Dubai, which is a steal, it's a steal. Another perk of being a, a cabin crew is the luxury of the resorts and hotels where you're staying at on your layovers. Like I'm talking about Westons, Marriott's, Sheraton's. Now, some of these might be four star, but who cares? <laughs> some of them are five star. And some resorts, like the one that we stay at the Mauritius, I'm gonna show you some videos now. Some of these resorts are so fantastic and they have all the activities, like water sports, all these things, they're all included. It's, it's, it's such a steal, just being a cabin crew, even for two or three years, can justify and quench that thirst of traveling and experiencing uh, other cultures and, and just going abroad and, and discovering new countries. So definitely if you work for a premium airline, not only you're gonna go on layovers, not only you're gonna go to new destinations, but you'll be in amazing, amazing, beautiful hotels that also give you spa included. Sauna, jacuzzi, you can do steam bath, you can do uh, a lot of stuff, I'm not gonna, but you get what I mean, right? Now we're getting to the last two juiciest points. I know that we've been talking for, I don't know, like 15 minutes, that's crazy. Uh, but uh, these are the juiciest points in my opinion. Uh, before we continue, hit the like button and comment down below. If you're working in an airline, let us know what's the best benefit and perk in your opinion in your airline, okay? So just comment down below, I'm curious. Now one of the perks that I used and abused like in, a, in an incredible way, when you start working for an airline and you start traveling everywhere, you start thinking, how do I maximize the travel that I'm doing. Like, I don't want to just be a cabin crew. Can I do something else? Hell yeah, you can record these videos. For example, what I'm doing right now. Every single layover I've been to, I always took my camera, I always recorded a video, I always did, like there's tons of videos that I have on my computer and I'm gonna be doing travel guides with, so you'll see me younger on them and you'll be like, has Orlando gotten younger? No, it's old videos, pretty much. One of the cool things is that you can go to the US, for example, or you can go to Hong Kong or places where equipment costs nothing, dirty cheap, 
and you can order ahead of time, ship it to your hotel, and then when you arrive in that hotel, you pick it up, and, and that's it. For example, I, so many times I ordered from B&H and from Amazon.com, shipped it, for example, to Chicago, to the hotel, and I picked it up free of charge. This is another thing that you can do. You can save hundreds of dollars on equipment if you buy it abroad and you pick it up yourself, rather than buying it in Dubai, for example, where it's more expensive. Now, it's not always like that. Sometimes Dubai has really good prices, but you gotta look hard and you gotta be lucky. Now, this is the last and final tip you were waiting for, and this is the duty-free sales. Uh, this is something that I believe you should pay a whole lot of attention to because it's uh, that factor that can make a huge difference in the income you make on board. Now we know, we did a video, you can check it out on how much the salary of an actual cabin crew is. You can check it up in the link here. Additional to your salary, you don't only have allowances from your hotels and at your layovers and so on and so forth, but you also have these duty-free sales and the commission you make out of them when you're flying. So let's say you're a duty-free operator, you go through the cabin and a lot of people start stopping you and one guy wants a perfume that costs I don't know, $150. Another guy wants another perfume for $200. Another guy wants a watch that costs $100. And then a lady wants a Mont Blanc pen, which is $1,000. So you, you keep on going and keep on going. And let's say you make $10,000. Your commission is 10%. So that's gonna be $1,000. So that's easy. $1,000 straight into your pocket. The company just gives it to you in your payslip, next month's payslip, and that's it. There's a lot of people that, that studied how to sell products and how to distribute products on top of their cart so that when they go in the cabin and the way they look at people, the way they, they flatter people, they manage to sell so much and even upsell other products. As they were selling one product, they said, but I believe this would be better for you in combination with or something like that if you're interested in. That color looks fantastic on you. You've got a great smile. They are making more money than a pilot in Emirates. There's proof. And, and these people who sell that much not only get that money out of a commission in their next payslip, but they also get rewards from the company for having sold that much. Now, I'm not sure what rewards these may be. They could be a Rolex watch, or they, they could be money or some days off or a holiday. They do these prizes, these raffles. So it's actually a really good motivator for you to sell on board. Personally, I was able to sell quite a bit on certain flights and some other flights I didn't really. There's specific flights where, I can't remember, I think it's Lagos, which is really good, uh, Geneva, really good. Certain flights, a lot of people buy a whole lot. They buy so much that duty-free operators, which are regular cabin crew, they just, in addition to whatever chore they have to do, they have to go in the cabin and do duty-free. Well, on these specific flights, they don't do any cabin crew chore. They don't even serve food or attend uh, customers' needs. And if you're really, really good in selling duty-free, not only you make more money, not only you win prizes, but in addition to all this, you don't get the work. <laughs> There's some drawbacks of being a duty-free operator. For example, if some uh, items go missing or like somebody stole or uh, there's a box with an empty bottle of par perfume inside because it happened in the past that some cabin crew brought their perfume from home and they swapped so they had a fresh new one and they put it upside down so the package still looks intact but in reality there's an empty bottle of perfume in there. So when the catering goes and checks and they find out that something is either missing or partially used, they're gonna charge the last cabin crew for that missing item. So you always have to be very careful when you're a duty-free operator to check your inventory as soon as you open it. You have to immediately check it so you don't get punished for these discrepancies. If you pay attention to detail, this won't go unnoticed and you're gonna be fine. So that's it, those were our top 10 benefits of being a cabin crew. Most of these relate to the Emirates airline, but uh, I'm pretty sure these can be relatable to other airlines as well. Uh, if you like the video, like it, of course, because it helps us, but comment down below and let us know your, your perks and your benefits in your airline. We're really, really curious. Now, since you enjoyed this video, have a look at this other one where we mentioned the top five negative aspects of being an Emirates cabin crew, or watch this other video as we reveal secret rooms and areas of an Emirates Super Jumbo A380.